long way to go from the beginning of the the recovery till the end where where I actually played football again. But what a what an amazing journey and that's I actually count myself lucky. Coming up on the official Celtic FC podcast. Join us for part two of an exclusive interview with former Celt Morton Vekorst as he describes his career-threatening illness that almost stopped his hoops career. This is the official Celtic FC podcast. Having the high of 1998 and lifting the title, I imagine at the time Celtic fans were then expecting, and the squad as well were expecting, that the team would go and kick on and win many more league titles in that period of time and many more cups. Unfortunately, it didn't quite work out that way until the arrival of Martin O'Neill in the year 2000. And for yourself as well, Martin, during that time, a couple of issues with injuries. I think at the end of the, the Kenny Dalglish era, you had a pretty bad injury, which, which kept you out as well. But then when Martin O'Neill came in, things got a little bit more serious for yourself, Morton. I wonder if you could just to describe to people that are maybe not fully aware of the situation that you had with your illness, if that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. I'll, I'll try and make it a short story because it's, it's obviously there's many details, but I'd been injured. I'd been out for three or four months and I had, um, it was a knee injury. Um, and as you say, Martin O'Neill had come in and uh, we had begun the season under Martin uh, and I was still injured. But then we we had a European game uh, in Helsinki and Martin wanted me to come along. Uh, on the Monday, I had played my first game back after the injury. Things had gone well, uh, but I, I felt very, very tired. And I kept you know, thinking, uh, it must be, must be because I haven't played for some time and I played 90 in every serve game. Um, it, Great to have come through it, no problems with the knee. Um, but then I felt ill uh, in the following days, but I still travelled to Helsinki and um, I wasn't meant to be in the squad. I trained the, the day before the game and I had never had such a sensation in my body. Um, I just felt so heavy. It felt as if I was one, running in, in, in heavy quicksand. Um, very, very strange. Um, and then coming back from Helsinki, I, I, I had a strange sensation. My, my hands, fingers were going numb. My feet were going numb. I went home, came in on the Friday, and then I had uh, problems uh, walking. And I went to see our club doctor, Roddy McDonald. And to be fair to him, he said he did some tests on me that day. He said, I think this looks like... And then he mentioned the uh, the illness, the, the syndrome, uh, Guillain-Barre syndrome. And I, I just looked at him and said, what's this? I've never heard of this. Well, that's because it's re very rare. Um, not many people um, get this. Uh, but I'm not sure. I have to speak to someone I know. I've never seen this. Um, and by the Sunday that, that week, um, this was the Friday I spoke to, to Roy. I was in hospital uh, Sunday night and not able to move very much. So this is how quickly it all went. And uh, again, to be uh, trying to make it short, it's a, an autoimmune disease where the, the immune system attacks the body rather than uh, protect the body as it usually does. Um, and then you get your, your, your nerves, um, peripheral uh, nerves get inflamed and you're not able to, to move. So I, that took me another two weeks. I couldn't move at all and ended in, in intensive care. Um, but as it said to me in hospital, I, I went to the, uh, the Glasgow Southern General uh, where I had some great treatment. Um, fantastic people. They said, um, uh, don't worry, you, you'll be fine. Uh, it, was, it was hard to believe at the time when I was uh, taken into hospital, but they were right. And uh, this is something that you have a good chance of recovering from. Um, <clears throat> with the help from great staff, great people at Celtic, um, um, it, I, I, I pulled through. Um, it, was, it was a long recovery time. I was in hospital for three months, uh, but then from the, the onset of the, the illness until I felt 100% right again. It was the best part of two years. 
Um, but I got there and um, I'm so uh, grateful to so many people, not only, you know, of course, the, the staff, um, at Celtic, the staff at uh, Glasgow Southern General, my teammates, but also uh, from people, uh, fans, football fans, and just people in general writing uh, letters to me. This was a time where uh, we didn't really have the internet. It was it sounds strange these days, but that's that's how many years ago it is. Um, people, I received so many letters, handwritten letters uh, from people all over Scotland, all over Europe, um, just giving me support. Uh, and, and, you know, that that helped me. And this was one of the, the I would say, the, the driving, the, the motivational factors for me in getting back to playing football. I wanted to, you know, help uh, other people that were uh, struggling with this illness or any other illness to show that you can you can pull through um, because I'd, I'd received so much help um, in my time uh, in hospital and when I came out. So this was just a, um, what do you say, a, a way of, of saying thank you. It really is remarkable words you're saying there, Morton, and a truly remarkable story to come back from that and not just to lace the boots again, but to do it at a really high level for club and for country going forward. There must have been some pretty dark moments during that period as well. You said that the hospital said you have a good chance of coming through it, but was there a real fear that your football career might have been over at that point? The way the way the way I tried to work it was that the first the first period in hospital, uh, I was. I was um, I, I was in a pretty bad state. I could move and you know, was on the ventilator. So at that at that stage, the way my mind worked was that I had to try and not think about football. I didn't think of myself as a football player. Um, I I couldn't. I, I just couldn't do it in my head. I had to take that part away. And uh, the only the only thing I was thinking about was getting back to a normal life, getting back to playing with the kids. Uh, we had two young kids at the time, um, two and three years old, um, or one, one, and, one and two years old. So they, they didn't know what was going on, but that was, that was the, the, the one thing in my mind. Um, and it wasn't until um, I was released from hospital um, three months down the line that I said, <clears throat> because of my, there was a professor, um, Professor Bone, um, Ian Bone, said to me, you've come a long way already. Uh, I cannot promise you where this will end, but it's looking very good. I think you will fulfill uh, your ambition of, of getting back to living a normal life. And I said, great. And from, from that day, I thought, um, I'm going to go for it. Um, I want to play football again. So that was a way it worked for me. And uh, just to give an example, there was, um, of course, there was, it was getting covered in Glasgow, um, as they do, they follow football. Uh, and there was this radio going on in intensive care, and I had to, I had to ask them to turn it off at one point because I couldn't, I, I couldn't handle listening to the stories um, at the same time of, of being there. So, but then... Um, Thankfully, everything went well, and um, I got through it, uh, as I said, with the help of um, a lot of great pe people. Yeah, let's look at some of those brighter moments of coming through it and making that return, because there is some really incredible footage, Morton. I've been watching it over the last couple of days and preparing for this interview. Of your road to recovery, when you're here at Celtic Park, walking around the stadium and practicing just to walk again to then go through that journey to pull on the green and white hoops of celtic once again how challenging was it to get back to that moment to learn to walk again to learn to run to then kick a football again talk us through what that was like it's a fantastic journey. Um, when when I watched those images, those pictures, I think oh, that there was a long way to go from the beginning of the the recovery till the end, where where I actually played football again. 
but what a what an amazing journey and that's i actually count myself lucky and they were right in in the, the staff at the hospital were right at the at the time when i was i was taken into hospital you, you have a great chance the thing was i had to change my mindset because i'd been used to uh, footballing injuries and you 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 get told okay if you do this you'll be fit in two weeks or three weeks uh, and if it's a bad injury half a year but this this was something different because this was not about kicking a ball this was this was as you say we're learning to crawl learning to walk um and then um, and then um, our physio uh, physio team with with brian scott uh in charge at celtic helped me along brian had worked with with other patients with uh Guy and Barry and um there was great help at the club and uh, just being part of the the squad again helped me um just hearing taking stick from from teammates in a funny way um that was that was great the worst part was at the start when I came in I knew I I didn't look great I didn't look great walking I had trouble walking but I didn't want to be looked at with pity I, I wanted to be part of the whole thing as a as a football player again. I knew it was I was miles miles off it. I just wanted to get on with it. And um, I think one of the things I was good at was that accepting this is going to take a while, and I have to embrace all the little all the little um, improvements that came along, whether it be um, yeah running around the 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 stadium pitch in four minutes. Uh, I think it took me six and a half minutes to begin with, uh, and then just working my way from there. So great journey, but I had to change my my mindset. Um, but fantastic being, fantastic reaching the goal of of pulling on the the hoops again, um, being part of it, just being on the football pitch, um, and just feeling the the support of every everyone. Fantastic. You said that the the nineteen ninety eight league title is your number one moment in football. However, when you do return to action for Celtic again after such a long period out, everything that you had gone through, you then return in November 2001 and then just your second start, you score for Celtic as well. From a completely personal point of view and taking out the, the team objectives and collectives and trophies, how did that moment feel for you personally? Fantastic. Um, the, the the actual goal itself, um, um, Jackie McNamara crossed the ball, and I, I, I'm, I <laughs> maybe it's because I've seen it a few times, but I remember pushing Momosila aside. Uh, he wanted to get at the end of that cross as well. I just pushed him, and nope, that's mine. I'll take it, and um, I got that goal, and it was uh, just relief and um, and an, an amazing moment. Also to feel. That my teammates wanted um, wanted me to 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 be back, wanted me to enjoy the moment, and um, yeah, great, fantastic. It was very very hard. I remember doing an interview after the game, and it was so hard to to put it into words. Um, and it's it still is today. Um, um, to actually. S- Put into words how much it meant. Um, I remember before the game, I was I was actually nervous. I hadn't been nervous before a game for years and years, maybe 10, 15 years. I think I had to go all the way back to the beginning of my career uh, with my first professional team in in, in Denmark uh, um, to, to you know to recall that kind of sensation. But I remember the game being delayed, the the, the start of the game, and I thought, oh no. Um, do we really have to go through this? Uh, I really had uh, those um, that sensation uh, throughout the body. Let's get going. I, I need to get onto the pitch now. And um, I knew, I also knew I wasn't quite ready. Um, credit to, to Martin O'Neill for picking me. Um, I didn't have the full sensation in my feet at that time. Um, but uh, it must have been good enough to be to play a part in that in that cup game. Um, I'm very thankful uh, that I got um, I got my first goal there. I got my first or the second appearance in in some time. Um, but I I still cannot I still not cannot really put into words how much it, it meant. 
um but um but maybe maybe some someday i will be able to no it's it's incredible and to to go through that journey to go through those high moments before it and then to get that news and to battle back and just to get into position again to play football is truly truly remarkable and you know at the end of that season it was 2001 when you came back in November in 2002 you ended up leaving Celtic how did you feel when when that moment arrived when you were leaving the club because most people come they can become legends and greats and icons and have so many amazing moments but for yourself I can only imagine because of everything you went through, you would have felt such, so much more of an attachment to Celtic and to Glasgow. So what was it like when you were then leaving the club in 2002? Very difficult uh, decision. Very difficult. It was a wrench. Uh, I, um, it was off the back of that difficult period and I was so thankful to so many people uh, at the club, uh, the fans and teammates and, and everyone but I felt <clears throat> I was 31 at the time. Uh, and because of my knee injuries, especially my ne left knee, I'd had so much surgery on it. Um, I loved playing football. I loved being at Celtic. But I I could also see that the team was was a, a unit, uh, very successful under Martin O'Neill, great midfield. Uh, it was going to be very difficult to break in. I'd never been afraid of a challenge, but I... I I knew I hadn't too many years left uh, in me to play. Martin O'Neill had said to me, uh, "We want to, we, we want you to stay," and I really wanted to stay. If I asked my family, they wanted to stay. Um, in the end, I made the difficult decision to to leave, uh, and I think, in the circumstances, this was the only way I was going to leave. Um, Michael Laudrup, who had been a um, a great inspiration to, to myself as a youngster, as an icon of Danish football, had got the job at Bromby as the, his first managerial job. And he called me to see what the story was. He knew I was, I was out, out of contract. And um, in the end, I made the decision to join him. Um, had it not been for him, I don't think I would have left. Um, and who knows what would have been. Um, in the end, it turned out I had three years left in me. And, but even along the way, those three years, it was a bit of a struggle with the, the, the knee injury. So I was glad that I, I, yeah, I was, I was, I was unhappy about leaving. Uh, it was so sad. Uh, my wife didn't want us to leave. Um, but I felt I had to, to, to play some more games towards the end of my career. And I got the chance to play under Michael. Um, and I, I became a, an important player in a, in a young side won some cups and the league back in Denmark. Uh, I managed to get back into the Denmark team, something that I hadn't really believed in. I thought my days were over. They had a new manager, Morten Olsen. Um, but I think, I believe, with the move, um, Michael had been the assistant to Morten for, for a couple of seasons. Um, with the move, it was made possible for me to, to break into the team. I think it would have been, it would have taken me a bit longer to break back into the Celtic side, um, but what a what a what a difficult decision it was. Uh, I'm still not sure, but that's that's life, isn't it? What would have been, um, but I I cling on to the fact that I I managed to break into the the Denmark team again. I had some good years at Bromby, and I still have my great memories of being uh, a Celtic player. Well, I ended up being quite a nice decision as well to go to play under Michael because that's a relationship that really developed for you even post your playing career and into your your days as a coach and a manager and a lot of people remember you being at, at Swansea City during a, a really amazing period for the club where I believe you won the, the League Cup I think during that that time when you were you were there um so before we kind of round off I just wanted to touch a little bit on your your coaching career and being the Celtic podcast, I was wondering over your time, has there been any players along the way that have played for Celtic that you've, you've coached and have any memories of? Any player that... Say that again? Any players that you, you coached or 
were assistant manager of that also played for Celtic that you, you have any memories of or had any conversations about Celtic with? Oh, there's been many. Uh, a lot of people ask about Celtic. Um, now we have the, the, the you know, the, the case uh, with, with Matt O'Reilly, of course, but um, one thing I always make sure um, telling people, even in football circles, is that if you get the chance to, to go along, along and watch um, a game in, in Scotland, make sure that you watch Celtic and um, even better, a European game or even an old firm game. Uh, most other people will get, would get a, a surprise because they, they have a, a view on Scottish football, um, but they, they don't know. They don't know how passionate um, people are about football. Um, so I always make sure of telling them that. Um, I am um, in the in the in my current job. You know, you watch a lot of football. Um, so yeah, I always I, because of Matt, I, I I watch as many games as I can. But it's not always I get the chance. Um, if if it hadn't been for Matt, it's not always you get the chance to watch Celtic. Um, if uh, if a player asks me about uh, Celtic, I'm I'm always going to be um, positive. Positive, uh, of course. Um, I had the best time of my my footballing career at Celtic, and it's a, a massive, massive club. And um, yeah, I've, I've I've so many positives about about the club. So yeah, that's the that's the that's the best thing I can say about about the the club. Um, it means so much to so many people, um, and it's just a, a privilege having having represented the the club and the colours. You know, it's amazing because, you know, as a, as a fan, you grow up in Celtic your life, but it's amazing to see just how much that the club can impact people like yourself more than come here and are part of it. So um, it's been really, really nice words there, and it's been amazing going through all of that. But just to finish, Morton, what we do a lot of the time when we have a guest on is just go through some quick-fire questions about teammates, about some more memories, if you're, if you're okay with that. Um, so, uh, first of all, I want to know who was the who was the funniest teammate you had at the time at Celtic. Who was the one person that was always pulling pranks? <laughs> oh, oh, there was a few, but uh, I I mentioned I mentioned mentioned Paolo Di Canio, but that was just madness. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't even start telling you about all the the pranks. Yeah. Okay. Nice one. Um, who was? Of course, you played under. Henrik Larsson, but who was the best technical footballer during your time at Celtic? Oh, that's a big question because what what is what is technique? What is um, I mean, I, the obvious one, Henrik. But that's I, I mentioned Henrik because he he was able to control and to score goals with any part of his body, and to me that's a, that's really a special. He could score with his left, his right, uh, his thigh, his chest, head. It was very good in the air. Um, so that's that's a quality. Apart from that, I would I would go for Paolo Di Canio in terms of you know uh, close control. He would get out of a phone box surrounded by four players uh, with the, the ball on his on his feet. Um, so he's another one. Um, but there were many. Uh, Celtic have great traditions of of uh, with with players in, in, in great Celtic teams that play skillful technical football um, so that, there were so many but there were, those two springs to mind OK so I want to give you a couple off the pitch as well you spent a lot of time living in Glasgow what is the what is the best thing for you about living in Glasgow and then also what's the one thing that you're like ah, I don't really miss that too much <laughs> could be a food or something Oh, I have nothing bad to say. I know it sounds boring, maybe, but uh, nothing bad to say about Glasgow. Even people talk about the weather, and there were I had teammates that were getting depressed. Um, no, it was a bit rainy, but uh, no, it did it didn't bother me. Um, the best thing, uh, probably a, a boring answer as well, but I, I just enjoyed every minute. Even you know we talk about bad times, but what I remember. As all the good times, um, friends off the pitch as well, uh, great neighbours, um, fantastic time. I, I, it's hard to pick one thing. 
Um, yeah, if I had to, if I had to choose one thing, that's nothing to do with Celtic in particular. But when I joined Dundee, there was this. Um, it turned out to be a very, very good friend of mine, Alistair Kidd. He's he's now sadly passed away a couple of years ago, but he he showed me uh, Scotland and um, the culture. Uh, not so much about that. He was he was a football fan as well, Dundee fan, but he he showed me what Scotland was all about apart from the the football. Um, so that was that was great, and that made me feel at home, and that made me appreciate all the things that Scotland has to offer as a as a country. Brilliant. Uh, a couple more. Um, who would be the best teammate for a night out at Celtic? Who was the one guy that was the last on the dance floor or the last one with a drink in their hand? <laughs> oh, that's a that's a that's a big one. Um, I have to I have to mention Tommy Johnson. He was always he was always one for a good laugh, and he he was he was he was a guy. He's I believe he still is a guy who who can bring people together, and who's um, who's got a sense of humour, and who yeah who likes a, a good laugh. Um, he was unlucky with injuries at his time uh, with with Celtic, but uh, he was one that was very important in a dressing room. Uh, sometimes Tommy could be a bit moody, but he was uh, he was very quickly back into his his um, his own self. Uh, always um, good for a laugh. So he he would be the one. Okay, final one. Now the answer to this might be obvious, and if it is the obvious one, I want you to pick something different. What is the one game that stands out to you from your time as a Celtic player? So if it is St. Johnston, which I imagine it probably is. Try and think of something else. Yes, yes, you're absolutely right. That's 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 right up there. Um, I think I, I I'm going to go a bit personal here as well because I thought the um, the the '97 uh, Coca Cola Cup uh, final. I think I mentioned before it was in March. And that's nonsense. It was in uh, late, yeah, November '97, um, and I had a, a very good game. Uh, I think it was. I was the man of the match, um, and I thought this this is my best game for Celtic so far at that time, uh, and I really enjoyed it. Paul Lambert had just joined, so I knew I had to be on my toes uh, and play well. Um, uh, um, thankfully, I had I had a few games with Paul Lambert in in the midfield. Great player, by the way. Um, but uh, that that game stands out as well because it was. Um, yeah, from a winning a trophy and from a personal point of view, I had a, a great game. And also, I have to mention my debut, uh, although it was short at Easter Road, Hibs for nothing, December 95, would have to be a, a pretty important game as well and something that I really enjoyed. Morton, you've been such a fantastic guest on the official Celtic FC podcast. It's been truly amazing to go back over your time at Celtic. I really hope the fans enjoyed it. I really hope you enjoyed it as well to go back over that. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm sure we could probably have done about 10 podcasts going over your time at Celtic. But no, thank you so much and hopefully you did enjoy it. Thank you for having me on the podcast. I really did enjoy it and I hope um, one or two fans will too. Uh, that's That will make it um, very worthwhile.